today the lecture title is oogenesis definition all the events by which oogonia are transformed into mature ova or oocytes but it is not as simple as spermatogenesis it occurs in ovary and it is an interrupted process it starts in the intrauterine life fifth week so it can be divided into prenatal and postnatal oogenesis and postnatal before birth prenatal after birth postnatal and it can also be divided into pre pubertal and post pubertal before puberty and after puberty that is the 13 years so what happens in the prenatal period uh, intrauterine life first event is the oocytosis the oogonia the primitive germ cells which have arrived at the developing gonad or developing ovary in the fourth or fifth week from the yolk sac site so they start dividing and dividing through mitosis the vn through mitosis so the millions about 20 millions oogonia are formed so this division is through mitosis so there is no genetic change the parallel to the oocytosis 
there are cells in the ovary known as the follicular cells these are cells, squamous cells single layer of squamous cells they surround groups of the uh, oogonia the and these are surrounded by single layer of flat cells So the, these are the oogonia surrounded by follicular cells. So the, there are groups of the 20, uh, the group oogonia, uh, the groups of 100 or 200 they are formed so the cells in one group they are probably formed by multiplication of the one oogonia in the start Next process is the <coughs> uh, degeneration. they start decreasing and in one group the cell number of cells decreasing from 200 to 150 or 100 or below in this way the, the groups are squeezing parallel to this is third process known as transformation of the oogonia into the primary oocyte. So just by the increasing the size and the the next process starts known as the first semiotic division. First meiotic 
Vn in it starts in the primary oocytes and not at time at a one time so they some of the cells they enter into primary oocyte and first meter D and then subsequent cells they enter into first meiotic division. So the prophase 1 and in this there are 5 phases leptotene zygotene Pacutin, diplotin. So in this visibility of the chromosomes, in this pairing, then crossing over and reshuffling of the genetic material, chiasma formation. So at this stage, now the division is arrested, no further division, no further division. This point should be noted, no further division. So arrested at diplotein phase of the prophase of first mutic division. So these primary oocytes, they are arrested over there. In this way, all the oogonia, they are transformed into primary oocyte and then arrested at diplotein phase of the first Mutic uh, prophase as first mutic division. So this should be remembered diplotene phase of the first mutic division. So there is no further division. Now the process of degeneration continues and at the time of but about 7 lakh the uh, primary oocytes are left. And each oocyte is surrounded by single layer of follicular cells so this mass including the primary oocyte in the diplotein phase and then surrounded by single layer of the follicular cells is known as primordial follicle. So it means the 7 lakh primordial follicles are present at the time of 
बर्थ तो दिस दिस इवेंट्स अकर बिफोर बर्थ when the baby is in the uterus of her mother now postnatal oogenesis starts and it is also two types pre pubertal so in this case only process of degeneration number of primordial follicles and secondary oocytes they are decreasing and decreasing and at the time of puberty only 40 to 50000 to 50000 uh the primordial follicles are left this is the only process which occurs in the pre pubertal period degeneration of the follicles and primary oocytes then the post pubertal so this is important one so <clears throat> pool of 40 to 50000 primary follicles are dumb in the cortex of the ovary so, so during this post pubertal ovarian cycles are started ovarian cycles are started post pubertal means ovarian cycles so this is also a separate topic but also included in the oogenesis ovarian cycle so definition cyclic changes which occur in the ovary after puberty known as ovarian cycle changes which occur in the ovary after puberty known as ovarian cycle usually it is of 28 days the first is definition duration 28 days plus minus some days so the from 1 to 4 days for 5 days 
then four or five days to twelve days and the fourteenth day then twenty sixth day twenty eighth day so this ovarian cycle can be divided into various phases number 1 the uh this uh, uh the primary uh the this uh, uh sorry uh, preantral preantral period then from 4 5 days to 12 the antral period and 12 to 14 pre ovulatory then 14th day ovulation then luteal phase and this one is the ischemic phase so these are various phases of the ovarian cycle preantral antral preovulatory ovulation luteal ischemic so what happened during pre and trough so the definition duration phases now during first phase that is the preantral period during this period the 20 about 20 primordial follicles 20 primordial follicles they come out from the store of primary follicles so please note only about 20 round about 15 to 25 so round about 20 primary follicles they come out from the store of the follicles and they take part in the ovarian cycle other primary follicles they uh, remain in the same phase of the diploteen phase so these, these follicles so the this is the primary oocyte in the diploteen phase surrounded by single layer of follicular cells now these follicular cells they become cuboidal they become 
cuboidal in shape so now the follicle is known as growing follicle now this follicle is known as growing follicle grow kar raha hai growing follicle this is primordial follicle this is growing follicle then these primordial uh, these follicular cells they become multi layer बहुत ज्यादा लेयर जो है देर सेवरल लेयर आर फॉर्म इन दॉलिकुलर फॉलिकल्स मल्टी लेयर So these a trans transparent membrane is formed between the uh, this oocyte and the cells multiplying cells this transparent membrane is known as zona pellucida this is formed by contribution both from the oocyte and the cells now these cells after multiplication these cells are known as granulosa cells granulosa cells so these are follicular cells these name is changed now granulosa cells now no follicular cells these are granular cells and the zona pellucida and inside there is primary oocyte now in the primary oocyte the stages they are progressing from the diprotein diakinesis and then metaphase and the uh, anaphase in this way they are progressing forward only in 20 primordial cells other cells which remain in the cortex of the ovary they remain in the diprotein phase so granulosa cells so this follicle is known as primary follicle this is known as primary follicle so don't confuse between primary follicle and primary oocyte oocyte is concerned with the uh, germ cell and follicle concerned with the whole mass 
so primordial follicle growing follicle primary follicle so these are in the preantral period and now from this uh, gallula cells outside there are the connective tissue cells known as theca cells so these theca cells and gallula cells they start producing estrogen they start producing estrogen and it comes in the blood of the mother and they uh, so they so this is uh, now uh, the uh, not the mother sorry so theca cells they produce and the gallula cells they produce estrogen which uh, through circulation reaches the, uh, the endometrium of the uterus and the they uh, control the different phases of the menstrual cycle the next phase is the enteral phase the enteral phase now cavity is formed in the granulosa cells in the granulosa cells cavity is formed this cavity is known as follicular antrum this cavity is formed in the granulosa cells and this cavity contains fluid liquor antrum the outside there is theca cells so this is one of parasida this is the uh, primary oocyte now this follicle is known as secondary follicle so the when cavity is formed follicle name is changed secondary follicle but inside there is oocyte still it is primary oocyte until first mutic division is completed when first mutic division is completed then it is known as secondary oocyte until first mutic division is completed is known as 
the primary oocyte but follicle is known as secondary follicle now this cavity starts expanding increasing in size and the size of the whole follicle is also increasing more and more and next phase that is the pre ovulatory phase during this the size of the follicle is increased first meiotic division is completed first meiotic division is completed and the large size the follicle is formed and two daughter cells are formed one capture whole cytoplasm and other remain as a nucleus without cytoplasm and this is known as first polar body and it remain within the zona pellucida and now the So this is large cavity known as follicular antrum and these are the granular cells and this is now known as secondary oocyte first metrodine is completed this is first polar body zona pellucida then the theca cells they are arranged into inner nuclear and outer uh, inner cellular and outer fibrous theca interna and theca externa interna cellular theca externa and the fibrous so this is the follicular antrum containing liquid follicular uh, liquid folliculi so this uh, the oocyte is pushed to one side due to this fluid and these cells surrounding the uh, this oocyte known as cumulus oophorus and most immediate cells which are adjacent to the oocyte known as corona radiata cumulus oophorus the the all the these cells which are surrounding the oocyte cumulus oophorus out of these most immediate cells which are surrounding the 
this uh, uh, oocyte known as corona radiata. So this is the part of the cumulus oophorus. Now this large size, the follicle is known as tertiary follicle or graphian follicle. Tertiary or graphian follicle. So please note 20, about 20 follicles they take part in the ovarian cycle but only one reaches up to the stage of tertiary or graphian follicle. Other cells, 19, about 19 cells there they are degenerated at various stages. Some are degenerated in the growing phase, some are in the primary follicle stage, some in the secondary follicle stage. Only one reaches a follicle, large size follicle. So now there is one graphene follicle in the ovary and now the second meiotic division is started in the oocyte. So what happened during pre-ovulatory size increased and the theca uh, is divided into two. First meiotic division is completed, polar body, first polar body is formed, cumulus oophorus and now these are, now the second meiotic is started in the the suicide and uh, the prophase and then the metaphase started and during this phase metaphase now again dvn is arrested metaphase of the second metric dvn now the next phase known as ovulation next phase ovulation So this is also a separate short note of violation definition expulsion or discharge expulsion discharge or your release of or pushed out pushing out of the secondary oocyte from the ovary is known as ovulation. The expulsion, expel, discharge, release or pushing out of the secondary oocyte from the ovary. So now this is expelled outside the surface of the ovary. This is known as ovulation and it occurs on the 14th day of the cycle of the 28 days and usually it occurs 14 days prior to next division if there is uh, this is of 28 days so it occurs on the 14th day if cycle is 29 days it occurs on the 15 days if cycle is 26 days it occurs only on the 12th day so the later 14 days are fixed earlier days are not fixed so it varies according to the total days of the cycle so this is the definition, it is on the 14th day and the cell is on the stage metaphase of the second metric VN, metaphase of the second metric VN and now the this oocyte 
candiocyte and the polar body zona pellucida and some cells of the corona radiata these three things are discharged four things so this candriocyte polar body zona pellucida and few cells of cumulus ovoforus known as corona radiata these things are discharged and the other parts of the graphene follicle are left behind and left behind part is known as the corpus luteum left behind part which contains the theca cells theca layers granular cells now these cells become uh, the full of glycogen and uh, the uh, yellowish become yellowish luteal cells and they start producing progesterone so this is the left brain part thick interna thick externa granular cells and the only these part are expelled out and what is the reason of expulsion number 1 the reasons of ovulation number 1 the abrupt abrupt increased release of lh hormone from the pituitary gland this is known as lh surge abrupt increased release of lh hormone known as lh surge but due to this the ovulation occurs and this uh, uh, what it does so if this is ovary and this is the graphene follicle so here surface of the ovary becomes thin and weak this point is known as stigma and now so this is the one reason lh surge stigma formation and this also lh surge also increase the pressure in the liquor antrum in the liquor antrum and this pressure pushes the oocyte through this stigma outside the ovary so due to mechanical pressure of the uh, this uh, liquor antrum this is pushed out so the weak point and this the increase amount of uh, and uh, uh, the this uh, Uh, liquid and the pressure in the liquid pushes the oocyte outside the ovary and this is known as ovulation so it occurs on the 14th day and these things are released left behind part is known as corpus luteum and reasons lh surge stigma formation and the mechanical pressure pushing the <coughs> oocyte <coughs> so this uh, 
oocyte is captured by the fallopian tubes. Now next phase is the luteal phase. Corpus luteum releases as skids the progesterone and which enters into the blood and reaches the uterus and the controls the secretory phase of the menstrual cycle. So on the 26th day, if there is no fertilization, note, if no fertilization, so no stimulus to the corpus luteum and it starts degenerating, it starts degenerating and defunctioning and now release of the progesterone decreases and ultimately uh, the halted and this is known as ischemic phase or the degenerative phase of the corpus luteum and now the color of the corpus luteum becomes white that's why it is known as corpus albicans So this is the ovarian cycle and the first is the preantral phase, then the antral phase, then the preovulatory phase, then the ovulation, then luteal phase, then the degenerative or the ischemic phase, carpus albicans. Carpus. So the bodies of the, uh, the follicles which uh, uh, are regenerated before graphene follicles are known as corpus atraticum. So there are three types of corpora, corpus atraticum, corpus luteum, corpus albicans. This is the ovarian cycle and now next cycle starts after 28 days, again 20 uh, the uh, follicles they come out and enter into the cycle other remain so the, these cycle changes they continues up to uh, the age of menopause when there is no ovarian cycle that is about 45 to 50 years 45 to 50 years it means in the last cycle when the oh, oh, 20 ovarian primordial follicles they take part in the cycle so those follicles they remain in the uh, diplotene phase of the first mutic division it means diplotene phase of the pro phase 1 can extend up to 45 to 50 years longest phase so only from the 50,000 uh, 40 to 50,000 primordial follicles only uh, the 500 500 oocytes they are ovulated they are reaching the stage of graphene follicle and they are ovulated 500 the so only 500 cycles so from 20 million to 500 only these 500 become useful other they remain are they are sporting so ovarian uh, cycle so the oogenesis never completes until fertilization Mind it, oogenesis never completes until fertilization. So, it remains in the secondary oocyte if there is no fertilization. So, no, uh, the uh, uh, this, uh, uh, completion of the second mutual division. 
So no overtids are formed. It means fertilization is necessary to complete the oogenesis. So now the oogenesis is interrupted process. It is uh, interrupted in the uh, before birth, then after birth, then after puberty, cycle changes, then again uh, in the menopause, the cycles are seized, no further cycles. So this is how oogenesis, oogenesis interrupted process and starts in the interuterine life. 